tales from the future. Give children a homeland. From the book by Vladimir McGrath, The Energy of Life. It's translated by Marianne Schwartz. In Ukraine, there is a city called Kharkov. In this city, there is a children home. It is a fine children home. Comfortable buildings, a handsome aquarium, a large pool. The local authorities made an effort and entrepreneurs help. The director of the Municipal Office of Public Education showed me the building and told me how the children from this home attended an ordinary school. I looked out the window. The children were coming back from school in groups. Just one little girl was walking apart from everyone else. That's Sonia. She's in the first grade, the director told me. She always walks along alone. She believes a Jewish family is going to adopt her soon. Why Jewish? She doesn't look like a Jewish child. She has blonde hair and looks more like a Ukrainian. Someone in school told her that Sonia is a Jewish name, so she's a Jew. Sonia agreed with this nationality and immediately decided she was definitely going to be adopted by a Jewish family. But she walks alone all the time because she thinks that if she walks in the group, her future parents won't be able to notice her. There is a fine children's home in Kharkov. There are children's homes in other cities in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. Children live in them, and no matter how comfortable the buildings of these places are, the children dream of having parents, of belonging to a family. Skinny little first grader Sonia walk her purposeful walk across across the asphalt yard in her gray shoes separately from the others in children's home girl Sonia dream. One day passed, then two, then months. Sonia still didn't know the children's shelter have ex existed for a long time and in different countries and not all the children get adopted. Indeed, most of them are doomed to live without parents. Sonia was not adopted either. However, her life took an unusual turn. At, this at the same time, a group of people, residents of Kharkov, decided to build a settlement not far from the city. They were able to obtain 150 hectares of land and 120 families each taking a hectare. We're allowed to, were allowed to found their own homesteads. One plot on the edge was left ownerless and they decided to give it to some children's home child. As it happened, the choice fell on little Sonia. The child was brought by car along with her instructor to her plot. The instructor began explaining to the child, you see Sonia, stakes have been hammered in and a string strung between them. Between Behind this string is your land, a whole hectare. It was given to you by people who have, all, who have also each taken a hectare of land next to you and will be planting gardens and building houses on them. When you grow up, you too can build a house and plant a garden. Your land will wait for you. The little girl walked up to the stream, touched it and asked the instructor, you mean past the stream is my land and past the stream I can do everything I decide myself? Yes, dear Sonia, this is your land and you alone can be in charge of everything that grows on it. 
but what, what, but what will grow on it? Well, for now, as you see, there are different grasses growing. But on the neighboring plots, look, people are already planting apple trees and pear trees and many other fruit trees. And they will soon have blooming orchards. When you grow up, you will decide what, what to plant, where on your land, so that, it's, so that it is beautiful the way the others are. Sonia leaned over and crawled under the string unto her own hector of land, took a few steps along the stream, string, looked closely at the grass and at everything bustling and chirping at it. She walked up to a small birch tree growing on the parcel, parcel allotted to her and touched it still slender trunk. She turned to her instructor and asked, for some reason, a little agitatedly, and the little tree, the birch tree, is that only mine too? Yes, dear Sonia, the birch tree too is now yours since it's growing on your land. When you get older, you can plant other trees here too. But now it's time for us to go. It will be din dinner soon and I have to be in the group. The girl turned to face her plot and looked at it in silence. Those who have children know that. While playing, children often mark off for themselves, improvise rooms out of various objects or build shelters in the country and play in them. For some reason, each child has a need to mark out his own small world from the larger world to create his own dimension. The children in the home have a shared dimension. The shared dimension, even if it is well arranged, has an oppressive effect on them. Sonia, like the other children, had never had her own corner, even a tiny one. Now she stood behind a string where everything was hers alone. The grass, the grasshoppers living in the grass and the little birch tree. The skinny little girl turned to her instructor. She began to speak in tones of prayers and resolve. I beg of you so, so much. Please let me stay here. You go and I'll come back myself. How will you come back 30 kilo kilometers? I will, Sonia answered firmly. I'll walk and I'll get there. Maybe I'll take a bus. Please let me stay on my land alone. The Ziggly driver, also an owner of a plot of land near Sonia's, near Sonia's heard the conversation and made a suggestion. Let the girl stay here until this evening. I'll take you back and get, and get her home this evening. After thinking it over, the instructor agreed. She couldn't help but agree because she looked at the face of the little girl standing behind the string awaiting her decision. Fine, Sonia, you can stay here until evening. I'll send your dinner with the driver. There's no need to send it. The neighbor woman and I share dinner. The Ziggly driver said seriously, respectfully pronouncing the words. Neighbor woman. Listen, Clava. He shouted to them, women busy over dinner on the porch of a house under construction. Make dinner for four. Four. We'll have our neighbor with us today. Fine, the woman answered. There's enough for everyone. And she added, Sonia, you be sure to come to me if you need anything. Thank you, the perfectly happy Sonia replied. After the ziggly left, Sonia walked along the string, strung between the stakes. She walked slowly, sometimes stopping, sitting in the grass touching something with her little hands and walking again. 
and this way she walked the perimeter of her entire parcel of land. Then she stood in the middle of the hector and surveyed all the sides of its boundary. And suddenly spreading her arms wide, she ran, jumped, and spun. After dinner, seeing how tired the little girl was, Clava suggested that she nap on a cot. But the weary Sanya replied, if you can give me some old clothing to spread out, I'll sleep on my own land next to the birch tree. Nikolaya set up a cot with a mattress and blanket next to the birch tree on Sanya's plot. The girl lay down and immediately fell into a deep sleep. This was her first slumber on her own homestead. What struck everyone at first as an insoluble problem arose at the children's home. Every day, Sanya asked the instructor, instructors to allow her to go to her Hector of land. Explanations that she was still too little to take the bus herself, and the instructors couldn't take her because they couldn't leave the other children, didn't help. Sanya began talking to the children's home director. She explained to the director that she absolutely absolutely had to go to her land. Had to because the people on the neighboring parcels were, parcels were already planting trees and they would soon have orchards blooming while her land looked aband abandoned. Nothing was going to bloom on it. In the end, the homes director found an acceptable solution for Sonia. Right now, we can't take you to your parcel, Sonia, since apart from everything else, you still have two weeks of study to go. In two weeks, vacation begins and I will speak with your neighbors. If they agree to look after you, then during the vacation, we will send you off to spend time on your parcel for a week or maybe more. By the way, you could spend these two weeks to the benefit of your land. Take these two brochures and read them. One talks about how to make fences and the other about the varieties of medicinal plants. If you behave well, I will also get you various seeds in time for vacation, for the, for the vacation. Sanya behaved well. She did her lesson, lesson assiduously, and all, absolutely all, of her free time she spent reading the two brochures given her by the director. When she went to bed, she imagined, pictured how prettily the different plants would grow in her parcel. One day, when all the children slept, the night aide noticed Sonia drawing trees and flowers in the moonlight that came through the window. Her neighbors agreed to look after the girl. And when the summer vacation came, the director himself helped load food supplies for two weeks. A shovel a small rake, and a packet of seeds into the Zagella tree trunk. Nikolai didn't want to take the food from the children's home, but the director told him that Sanya was an independent girl and would never want to be burdened, never want to be a burden to anyone, and that it would be better if she saw that she had her own food. She was also giving a new sleeping bag, even though the family of her neighbor Nikolai had prepared a small room and bed for the girl on the now furnished first floor of their house. When Sonia got in the car, not only the children's home staff working that day, but also many people who had come, especially to see the girl's face. Beaming with happiness, saw her off. The first three nights, Sonia slept in the room set aside for her and her neighbor's, home, neighbor's house and she spent the entire day on her own hector of land. The third day was Nikolai's birthday and many guests came to see him. One young couple came with their tent. The next day the guests left, but the tent stayed. This is a present for you, the young people told Nikolai. Sanya went up to Nikolai and asked to sleep in the tent. Nikolai gave his permission, of course. Sleep there if you want to so badly. It is stuffy for you, 
in the room. Is it stuffy for you in the room? It's, not, it's nice in the room, the girl replied, but everyone is sleeping on their own land, and mine is left all alone at night. There are lights on many parcels, and mine is dark. You're saying you want me to move the tent and set it up on your parcel? Very much, Uncle Kolya, next to the birch tree. If you have the time, and if, and if it's not too hard. All the following night, Sonia slept in the tent, pitched next to the birch tree on her Hector. Waking early in the morning, she immediately went over to the water bucket by her tent, scooped out a mug of water, and taking some into her mouth, released a thin stream of water into her open hands and washed up. And she took the album in which she had drawn herself the pictures of her ideal garden on the parcel and examined them, and she went to make her flower beds and fences. The small digging tool given her by the children home director was certainly sharp, but Sonia just could not push it all the way into the ground. She only had the strength to get it in halfway. However, her fences were turning out anyway. Her neighbor Nikolai offered to dig up the places Sonia showed him on her Hector with his rototiller, but Sonia categorically refused. In general, she react jealously to any incursion, incursion on her Hector. People sense this and try not to cross the border marked out by stakes and the lines strung between them without the girl's knowledge. Even her neighbor, Nikolai, when he woke up in the morning to call Sonia to breakfast, only went as far as the string and called to Sonia from there. Some very unusual aspiration of the little girl for independence or fear of being burdened to anyone would not allow her to ask for anything. And even when one of the residents of the settlement tried to offer her clothing or candy or some other supply, she politely thanked them but categorically refused to take anything. And the two weeks she spent on her land. Sonia dug, dug, put in three fences, fences and made a large flower bed in the middle. On the morning of the last day of Sonia's two weeks stay on her land, Nikolai came as usual to the border of her parcel to call her to breakfast. The little girl was standing next to her flower bed, bed when nothing had come up yet, looked at it, and without turning around answered, Uncle Kolya, you don't need to call me to eat two meals today. I don't want to eat today. Nikolia would say that he sensed a certain anguish in the girl's voice. And barely restrained sobs, but he did not try to discover what had happened. He went back home and began observing Sonia through his binoculars. The little girl was walking around her parcel touching the plants and straightening the fences. Then she went to her birch tree, put her arms around it, and her little shoulders shook. The children home old minivan came for Sonia just before dinner. The driver stopped by the entrance to Nikolai homestead and honk. Nikolai recounted what happened then. When I watch her through my binoculars collecting her modest things, the spade and the rake and head downcast in our direction. When I saw her face through the binoculars, I couldn't stand it and grab my mobile phone. It's a good thing I was able to reach the children home director right away. I told him I could sign any documents and accept responsibility for the child. I would take leave and be on the parcel all the time just so the little girl could be on her Hector to the end of vacation. At, the f at first, the director began to explain that all the children from their, from their children home were supposed to go for treatment and rest to a seaside children's camp. The home had been trying for this opportunity a long time, and now the children were going, thanks to their sponsor. I said something Bruce to the director, but he didn't, he didn't, he did not take 
offense and respond equally curtly. Then he added, give the driver the phone and tomorrow I'll call myself. I ran out, gave the driver the phone and told him, go on friend, get going quickly. The driver left. Sanyo, who had come up, asked, Uncle Kolya, was that our van coming for me? But why did it leave? For some reason, I was powerfully upset from my negoti negotiations with the director. I lit a cigarette. My hands were shaking, and I said to her, Well, yes, they, they were here for you. They just came to ask whether you needed any food or anything else. And I told him we would get along. She looked at me closely, and I thought she understood something, and she said quietly, Thank you, Uncle Kolya. She start, started back again, and then ran quickly to her land. The children home director arrived in the morning, but I was already waiting for him. However, he went straight to the tent and not to see me. I didn't have time to tell him he had crossed the string without any invitation. But he did well and guessed himself. He also did well, obviously, not to traumatize the child. He said as soon as the girl came out to meet him, Good day, Sonia. I came by just to ask you something. We're going to the sea. What about you? Will you stay here or go to the sea with us? Here, Sonia didn't say, but shouted. That's what I thought, the director replied. That's why I brought you <clears throat> by way of food supplies. You mustn't worry or waste your time. I don't need anything. You don't? What would you have me do then? The state gives us money for each people and you're going to raise yourself here and feed yourself? How would you have me account for the state money in that situation? No, you must take it. Be so kind. Come on, Alex. Unload it. Allow us to enter. Sonia, maybe you'll show me what you've been doing. For a while, Sonia looked at the director, trying to make full sense of the situation. Then she saw the van driver unloading heavy bags. And when she finally realized she was going to stay on her land until the end of vacation, she exclaimed joyfully, Oh, what am I doing? Come in. Here's the little gate. There's no string here. Please be my guest. I will show you what I've been doing. And you, Uncle Kolya, come in. She led us to her tent and immediately, immediately offered us water to drink from the bucket standing by the tent. Here's the water. Here is the water. I get it from the spring. It tastes good, better than from the tap. Drink some, please. I won't refuse, the director reply, and scoping out half a mug, drink it with pleasure. It's good. I, too, had a drink, and so did the driver, and we praised Sonia's water to her great satisfaction. Probably for the first time in her life, Sonia possessed something all her own. Even if it was just water, it was hers. And for the first time, she could give something all her own to grown-ups. Sonia had begun to feel that she was part of the world. Then for an hour and a half, maybe even two, we listened to Sonia's enthusiastic story about what she had already planted, plant, and what she planned to plant. She showed us her drawings of her future homestead. Only there was no little house in her drawing plans. Time for us to go, the, the director told Sonia. You can unpack these things for yourself. I also brought you a battery-powered lamp. It can light for distance, but if you switch the lamp to daylight, then you can read. And now you will have something to read. I have bought you magazines on, on designing land and books on growing everything and on folk medicine. Oh, how could I forget? Get again, Sonia threw her hands up. I'll be right back. She folded back the tent flap and saw bundles of different herbs hanging on a string stretch across the tent. 
She took several bundles and held them out to the director. This is Celandine. It's a kind of herb. This is for Katya from our group. She needs to brew it and drink it. She's, she's sick a lot. I read about it. I read about it in the brochure you gave me. I tried it. Thank you. All in all, the director is a good man and loves the children. Later, he and I talk and he asked me about Sonia's behavior, behavior and gave me some practical advice. Sonia spent the whole summer in the tent on her hectare of land. Her flower bed bloomed in the middle with beautiful flowers. Onions, radish, and other things came up in her beds. In the evenings, when the days started getting shorter, you could often observe the light of the lamp flickering in the tent under the birch. Every evening, Sonia read the books on folk medicine and kept drawing in her album the future of her land. When at the end of the summer, the old van came to take her back to the children home, I helped load Sonia's supplies. There was quite a lot to load. She had dried 200 or so bundles of herbs, a sack of potatoes, three melons. We really loaded up that van. I asked her, what about next year? Should I hold on to your tent? I'll definitely come for the next vacation. I'll come to my land the very first day. Thank you for being such a good neighbor, Uncle Colvia. She held out her hand, now much stronger to shake. Over the summer, too, Sonia herself not only had tan, but also had become stronger and more self-confident. She came the next year with fruit tree saplings and some seedlings and immediately got down to work. At an assembly, the people of our settlement decided to build Sonia a little house. Seeing other wife of an entrepreneur who had built the largest house began to insist it not be small.